Howdy, I'm John Biggs. We're here at CES 2013, and I'm sitting with Bree Pettis, founder, creator, what are you, the godfather of the MakerBot? Yeah, you can blame me. And every year we like to bring you out, and we like to see all your toys, so the MakerBot obviously is a 3D printer, yep. probably one of the best known right now, and you guys are making them. You just hit, what was the latest model today? So we just launched our fourth generation 3D printer. We've got the MakerBot Replicator 2, which is a desktop 3D printer, and the MakerBot Replicator 2X, which is an experimental 3D printer. Okay, so that one can fly. Right. Okay, excellent. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the experimental aspects? So with the MakerBot Replicator 2, it's optimized for PLA, which is a corn-based renewable bioplastic that's just wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. But some people really love working with ABS, which is a traditional it's a traditional plastic that manufacturers like to use. So we optimize the Replicator 2X to use ABS. And it's a little bit more of a fussy plastic, so okay. it's more for your Doc Brown, MacGyver, Test Pilot. So this type. is PLA, right? This is PLA. This is, a, this is a PLA. So this is a little bit, it's a little less shiny than the, the ABS. And it's more rigid. It doesn't okay. have as much give. It's, a, it's instead of being a petroleum product that's just luscious and gooey, it's, uh, it's, it's a crystalline structure. Mm, okay. So this, but this requires a little less heat on the platen, which is the base. No heat on the platform. And it's a little bit, and it's not going to, it doesn't bend as much when you build. You know, once we dialed in the settings on PLA, it's a lot easier to use. Okay. And so if you just want to make things, you get the MakerBot Replicator too. If you like to spend your weekends under the hood of your hot rod, mm -hmm. you get the MakerBot Replicator 2X. Okay, so that was a lot of geeky talk just now because we're I, I have one of these at home and I I love it. So, but what are what are so what are some of these things that you guys have been working on? These are some uh, these are some little projects that, that you brought in. Yeah, so these are actually this is a, a engine block from Ford. So this is an actual six cylinder engine block. They uh, published the designs on Thingiverse and and we made it and it's. I, I'm a little bit of a gearhead, so this is like, I just love this. So Ford sent you the file and said, yep. here, take the file for our engine. So I mean, obviously this, the, the car would be much bigger. Yeah, so if this was a car, an engine for a car, the car would be yeah. about this big. So but but, you, couldn't, you can print it on the MakerBot, but they sent you the, the file and you were able yeah. to pl print. This is essentially Ford's IP that they're giving you to print. Yeah. So somebody, oh, very cool. And you know, the great thing is that if you want to learn how an engine works, now you can literally make one. And it's so cool. You can see all the places where oil goes and all the places where water goes. And it's an education in, its, in, in the object mm -hmm. and, how, and how engines work. And these, and obviously you guys aren't selling these things, but these are, these are things that people are making and building yeah. to sell. So this, this is, is a guy, um, and his website is squarehelper.com. And he makes this little thing for squares, which are the thing that go on iPads and let you swipe credit cards sure. with. Well, they swing around and you can, they go the wrong way and then it doesn't work. He saw that problem and he made a solution on his MakerBot and then he now makes them and sells them and he cranks his MakerBot out 20, he literally runs it like 20 plus hours a day mm -hmm. making models and he has like a little webcam that he and watches. it's a goofy it little, it's there. just a little piece of plastic. I'm not sure if you can get in on that. It's just a little plastic. Does, it, does this on Thingiverse? Can the people make it themselves or is he, is he being a little cagey? I think he's keeping that one to himself and building a business around right. it. And this, this is, is great. The, this is one of the tricks that the MakerBot is best for. It's for building these prototype applications. Yeah, so this is a company called Rest Devices. And they are solving, yeah, so there's a little turtle on here. And this is a onesie for your baby. And if you're a new parent or you have a baby who's a preemie, you stress out a lot about whether or not they're breathing. So like you rush in the middle of the night sure. and see if they're breathing. Well, with this, this has a this is a prototype, but there's electronics and a battery that go in here that snap on here, and a sensor that goes across the baby's chest, and you can check if your baby's breathing on your iPhone. So this brings peace of mind to parents. Yeah, of course. Yeah. My baby's alive. How about now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so and when and when, it, and when there is actually a problem, it'll contact you. And the it, cool thing is, is they started out making shirts for adults who have sleep apnea, which is where you forget to breathe, and this helps you monitor it, and now, then they keep prototyping and they realize, like, actually, there's a big market in babies. It might be more appropriate. So they were able to iterate, and instead of making it look like just a little kind of square on there, they made it look like a little turtle. Okay. So they get to be iterate. And this idea of, of iterating is kind of core to having a MakerBot. You can make one and then make it again. Mm -hmm. Make a change, make it again. Make a change, make it again. And that might, in traditional manufacturing, that might take a month, maybe more, maybe a lot more. 
But with a MakerBot, you can do, you can iterate multiple times a day. And that pace of change just lets you get to a better product faster. Yeah. Now these things are cute. I, I actually try to print this at home, and I would never, it never worked for me because the leg would get all gangly. Is this an improved version? Or? Yeah, this is a good one because it comes in pieces and you uh, print out the legs separately and you, switch, you smush them together. And this is Pretty Small Things, Casey Hallgren. Yep. And she's a set designer and her set designs are on Broadway. And the way this is traditionally done is with cardboard and glue and an X-Acto knife and spilled blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, now she's got MakerBots, so she digitally designs these things, makes her sets, takes them in, shows them to the director, they make adjustments, she can make changes and bring them in the next day. And, uh, and then on top of that, because she's made all these designs of like period furniture, like people who are into furniture are like, that's that <laughs> kind of chair. And so she, has, she started a website called prettysmallthings.com where she sells them to people who have dollhouses. Oh, okay. so it's, there's a lot of entrepreneurial spirit when you have a MakerBot, because you, you, know, you have the means of production. Instead of going to a factory, you know, the factory on your desk or you know, on your coffee uh, table. Yeah. And so you guys have had a lot of changes afoot at the, at the headquarters that we interviewed you guys at yep. earlier. That was like a 3,000 square foot thing. Now where are you? Yep, now we're, we moved a, a couple blocks away to a legitimate office with more than one bathroom. Oh, wow. And we're in a space now with 32,000 square feet on mm -hmm. the 21st floor. And it's just gorgeous. And it's like, it's... You know, I think we have a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome. We were yeah. all like really squished together in this really <laughs> small space. And you know, it was kind of hard to get things done and just even move around was hard. And now we're actually like in an actual office and we're like, wait, you know, what do I do with my whole desk? Sure. So it's, it's kind of an exciting new I world. I remember I think I was sitting on your side of the desk when we were sitting, when we talked earlier. Yeah. So, and you also opened a retail store and there's a new customizer that just came out today? Yeah. So the. So the retail store we, we, we opened on Mulberry Street, and it's just north of Houston. And you walk in, you can see MakerBots, you can buy things made on a MakerBot, and we have the 3D photo booth where you can get your head scanned mm -hmm. and make models of yourself or your family. I made a model of Nika. Yeah. She's 18 months old, but I brought her in there and held her up <laughs> and gave little miniature busts, little portraits, 3D oh, portraits excellent. to the, her grandparents. That was a big hit. And, uh, but you can go in and get yourself scanned and you know, it's version control. Mm -hmm. You can have a model of yourself and be like, <laughs> someday I, if I ever need to be, look, you, know, you can have the, yeah. a map of your face so you can look that way again or mm -hmm. just have a, an archive of, of what you look like. When, when Kia was in the hospital, I gave him a model of, of me to be with her in the hospital. It's, so it's kind of like <laughs> an old school sort of like daguerreotype sure. 3D photo booth experience of going in, getting scanned and getting a model made of you. Oh, very cool. And then, the, the API, so we've been working a lot on Thingiverse. So we launched a dashboard. And and Thingiverse is the database of things. So if you wanted to print this out, you yeah. would go on there, download the file. Search for Ford, download that. Print it. Make it. Yep. Um, we've really been busy. So we've got the, <clears throat> the dashboard, the, uh, you can follow people now, because it's getting too much. Like there's too many things being uploaded every, uploaded yep. every day to see everything. And then we've got collections. So people collect things. So you can collect all of something. So you can, there's like a collection that the, uh, the, 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 the art folks in Chicago did of all the things that have been scanned from museums. And it's really just a cool way of collecting 3D models and putting them all in one place and organizing them and right. browsing them. And then we're pretty excited. We just, opened the, we just opened up our API so people can build applications on, on Thingiverse. And to kind of show what's possible, we built the MakerBot Customizer, which allows people to make parametric software-based models that make things and have variables in them. So it's parametric, so you could oh. make... So you can resize this to your own liking. You could resize it, or if you want to make a snowflake, you could choose how many branches there are, oh, what right. the angle is. It's gonna mean, th and, and we basically made it so people can make customizable objects, and when you make something, you can make it so other people can make it too the way they want. All right. I think we're out of time. I love sitting here and talking about this stuff. But thanks for coming out here. I hope your uh, show is excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bree Pettis with MakerBot. I'm John Biggs, and thanks for watching.